Morning all, welcome back to the channel. It's Thursday morning, I'm up in the borders. It's a bit soggy, but it's sort of not as bad as it was yesterday. Um, I'm on a very busy building site and I'm looking for an eight and a half ton digger that starts, runs and cuts out. Um, it likely starts, no bother. Uh, it doesn't seem to be searching for fuel, but an engine management light pops on and the engine cuts out. Um, so, I'm just looking for the eight and a half tonner, but there's tipper wagons and concrete wagons and low loader wagons juggling around and I've just turned up in the middle of it all. So we're just tucking out the way and um, see what happens. Hey, it's eight and a half tonner. It's doing all sorts of weird things. So plugs full of water. That is our problem right there. I'll check this bottom plug, but the weather's definitely taking a turn on us. Um, can't get the van near either, but that is the problem right there, surely. I wouldn't be surprised if I've got a couple of broken pins as well. Oh, that's not what I wanted to see. All right, so when I wanted to run to that machine, um, started it and it started no bother. And uh, it idled for about three or four minutes and I thought, right, I'll try and rev it up, so I revved it up, revved up no bother, um, started working the machine, everything was brand new with it and then just, it just all of a sudden put a check engine light and a uh, symbol of the DPF filter in red, um, so, but the machine was still rev and run okay, so I continued to work it and uh, pulled up the real time failure codes and there was all sorts there and then all of a sudden the machine just cut out uh, but the weird thing was turn the ignition off and then turn the ignition on but without turning it to start the machine fired up on its own um, which I thought was really odd so I keyed off, left it for a couple of minutes turned the ignition on and it came back on with no error codes went to turn to start it and it wouldn't start so I keyed back off again and then I went to turn the ignition on and again it tried to fire up on its own without me telling it to so uh, yeah that was my first suspicion was that uh, plug in the bottom left corner there so I'm gonna try and rescue the pins clean them up as best I can just try and get it running I've got some electrical grease I've got some contact cleaner um, I'm gonna have a very good do try to dry it out um, but I don't really want to be sat on the track cutting that plug out and joining it I don't think I haven't got enough connectors either and um, I'll just have a look I've been needing these red ones here and as you can see I'm running low on them I'll probably get away with those ones but uh, yeah, it's not ideal life um, but anyway I spoke to the customer so just do what you can do to get it going and if it fouls up again then at least he knows where to go to or what to do uh, if it does mess around again so we'll see what happens but uh, it's absolutely chucking it down out there so i'll just leave my phone in my pocket and i'll join you when we're back at it right the weather's squared up a bit this is the uh finished result unfortunately two of the bottom pins couldn't be saved they were rotten out so I've installed that jumper wire. I'll tidy that up nice and neat. Just jumps over the plug. But that's it away now. Happy days. Right, there's some cable ties on the job. I'll just check it out now. If anything comes up. So far so good. See if it'll start. Starts runs switch it off turn the ignition on good it doesn't try and start all by itself i'll leave it running while i uh, get squared up in here all right the weather's come back in again so on that bombshell i'm gonna head back down to the yard so yeah so off the back of uh, yesterday's video um 
about where to store those pipes and the thumb when the thumb isn't in use and um, there's a lot of good suggestions and I'd thought of a couple of them uh, like I mentioned in the video just having a couple of quick release couplings just to plug them into that don't go anywhere um, and also I had thought about putting a changeover valve in so you know you change over and plug your um, hammer attachment in the the issue that I had or have is that uh, when a machine is sold and all the extra work to do to it it's all costed out at a set set price so the salesman knows how much it's going to cost to add this this and this and this to it and uh, then he can sort of price the machine accordingly so um, I don't know whether there's any time factored in for doing something like that or whether it's even been thought about so um, yeah on my way back down the road I'll speak to my salesman and see what the crack is there and if there's a bit of time and labour left over then uh, I'll have a bit way up at what's going to be the cheapest and most cost effective option so we'll see we'll maybe just leave it as it is and uh, if the customer wants something added to it they can get us to add it to it so that's where we're up to with that and uh, god yeah it really is raining now I'm going to head back down the road It is Friday morning. Um, yesterday afternoon I got back to the yard and did a couple of bits and pieces. Um, now I'm out west today. I was gonna get that uh, 14 tonner with the wiper blade seen to today on the way out here, but he did warn us. He said it's going out South Cumbria next week and um, looks like I missed it by a day. If I didn't have that breakdown yesterday, um, I probably would have got it which is a shame but it's just one of those I'll put it on my radar for next week if I'm down South Cumbria at any time um, so yeah I've got a 14 tonner and an 8.5 tonner to service and uh, hopefully the weather stays dry so we'll spin some filters and uh, see how we go from there right first one is this 14 tonner the 8.5 tonner is in use at the moment but they're going to swap machines over when I finish this is a 500 hour service plus uh, an add blue filter or a 1500 hour service, four and a half thousand hours. We've got it trapped over towards the van. It's a while since I've seen this uh, digger, so while it's up in the air and I've got the final drive set up, I'll just check out rollers, make sure they're all right before I set it down. Spin the top half round back towards the blade and then we'll get some oil dropped out. No Just had a quick once over having a look around it the rollers are all okay what i'm looking for is any flat spots on the rollers generally that indicates that the rollers aren't going round um but most well all every single one of the rollers on the machine you can turn by hand so everything's okay that way um i've also noticed that the hydraulic oil level um doesn't look like it's on the glass but the glass is a bit cloudy so i'll double check that before we pack up with this machine so yeah I'll get some engine oil drop now
So uh, to be finished in here, all filters are done. Um, while I've been, well, it was more while I was taking the engine oil out, you can see how damp it is over there. And I mentioned earlier that I noticed the hydraulic oil level was low. I've come round here to have a look. Where's my torch at? Where's my torch? And I just wonder whether this hydraulic return pipe has been leaking. You can see how damp it is up there and it's sort of covered this left hand side of the valve chest, it's all all damp. And you can see how the paint's clean on that pipe. That suggests to me that it's been running out of there. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, try and make any adjustment on those Jubilee clips. There's four of them. You can see in there, look. Uh, and I'll try and try and stop that, hopefully. But yeah, everything in down here is damp. I mean, there's pipes forevermore, as you'd expect on a valve chest. Everything looks damp, but nothing looks as though it's running out of a pipe. It just looks all damp. So I've just given uh, all these Jubilee clips uh, a tidy up. Um, or a tighten up should I say and I've cleaned that bit of pipe off uh, whether or not that'll stop it I would hope it does the amount I've given them a nip up um, there was a fair bit of adjustment left on them so hopefully that'll stop this mess and uh, keep some hydraulic oil in the tank right I've got this step off and this is how you get the absolute filter on the zero tail swings take that dust cover off 22 off. Oh, you want Just make sure that o-ring hasn't squashed out. Might as well end up with uh, an odd blue fault. Gentle nip looks okay, I think, from what I can see. Got a new dust cap here, so I'll put that one on. Nice tight fit. Right, put this step back in place now. Just after topping up the hydraulic oil, took the yeah, took best part of that drum to fetch it up onto the level. Um, but not as much as I expected to be fair, so yeah, that's done. I'll go and grab my funnel now and we'll put some engine oil in and I'll bring up my half inch bar and just slacken the fan belt off because I noticed there was a bit of a squeak um, when it was idling. So we'll just check our bearings out in there. It might be some or nothing. Uh, it might just be that the belt's got a bit of water on it and it's damp, but it'd be worth checking out. So on inspection of the pulleys and belts, the tensioner bearing, if you can see or not, it's got a 
there is a little bit there um, but also the belt there's a few cracks in it as well so definitely recommend a new belt at the very least and then just see if that stops the little squeak it's as though your fan belt's just ever so slightly loose um, just at a low idle it's a, got a bit of a squeak to it whether it stops when it warms up I would imagine it does but yeah that belt at the very least needs changing unfortunately I haven't got one on the van yeah there's a bit of flare I'm not too concerned it'd be worth changing that if you're replacing the belt I think Right, that's that digger finished and the eight tonner is in the queue so we better get cracked on. I'll go and shove that digger back up that way and we'll bring the eight tonner in. So this eight and a half tonne is getting everything. That is the box of stuff, apart from that wiper arm, obviously. Um, but yeah, we've got all sorts. We've got pilot filters, return filters, um, air filters, fuel filters, engine oil filter. I'll do final drive oils as well. So yeah, plenty to be out on this one. Engine oil's draining, or drain, sorry. I'm just draining off the uh, engine oil filter. It goes down into that little bowl there. That makes less mess. Hubs are draining. Batter on with this one now. getting moved down the building by the shed builders working on the doors. I'm not far off now anyway, I've just got return filter and engine oil to put in it. Right, half the reason why I've been putting you on a time lapse, the radio in that shed is blooming loud, so just the news so I won't get copyrighted for the music that they're playing. Um, I'm just done with filling the engine oil up, I just need another couple of litres just to top that up. Um, but everything's done, return filter in the tank, pilot filter down in there, a couple of fuel filters, engine oil filter, air filters. I've already done my final drive oil, so I just need to remember to, yeah, I just need to remember to tip them out before I go and trap the machine up the yard. That'll make a mess pretty quickly. Yeah, all's going well, can't complain. And it's just, just to say it's still dry. Right, that's me finished there. It is time for a late lunch and I am ready for it as well. I never had my breakfast this morning. <laughs> so I am definitely ready for my lunch. Um, yeah, late lunch, very late lunch. Right, I'll, uh, I'll have my lunch and I might be uh, might be some kind of fettle. All right. Healthy lunch today. I had the salad. Right, I'm heading back through to Carlisle now. Um, yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah, it's it's dangerous, isn't it, when you go somewhere like that and you're hungry because you always over order. Anyway, back through to Carlisle and uh, let's get all this waste oil chucked out the back of the van. Oh, it's 
it's not even that bad. You'll wash the paint off it, you wash it that much. Um, yeah, I know it's not really that bad, but it's uh, less of a job to do when you stay on top of it. I have a bit of free time to do it. And uh, that's taken me 15 minutes. When the wash was frozen up and I didn't wash the van for a fortnight, it took me nearly an hour to clean it. So it saves a bit of time in the long run. Right, I'm gonna go and put some uh, add blue in it now because it's given me a 336 mile ultimatum before it's going to get really upset with me so um i better do it now while i'm in the yard eh? right while that slowly makes its way into there i'm going to uh, clean my windows it's still going right windows are clean how much of that has got left it's hardly worth keeping really because It'll just sort of degrade at that now. Well, that's it full. And it's the same with the washer fluid as well. It's a decent sized reservoir on this, but it doesn't just quite take a five litre drum. So you end up with loads of, well I do anyway, I end up with a couple of washer fluid tubs that I've got like half a litre in each. Anyway, that's us done. Yeah, that's the sort of stuff that I get up to. Um, see, I've noticed in the last few videos, I've sort of finished up mid to late afternoon and then you've caught me the next morning and I'm sort of saying, morning, I got back and I did some bits and pieces and here I am today. That's the sort of bits and pieces that I get up to. Um, so I've emptied my waste oil, I've emptied my waste filter bin, washed the van, um, Put add blue in it, put screen wash in it, give the windows a clean, give the inside a good clean out, and um, just bits and pieces like that. Just you know, stay on top of the job. It's like I say, it's less of a job to do um, if you stay on top of it. Um, other bits and pieces I might be up to is uh, attending to internal emails or going on the uh, Doosan service site and looking at different service bulletins etc that may or may not be to do doing job cards sending warranty information away so there's all sorts of bits and pieces that isn't really content but um, I've shown you that just as an example of what happens um, so yeah uh, it's sort of well it is it's 10 to 5 now so I'm rounding up the day but uh, one more thing before I go I was watching well when I'm not editing these YouTube videos, um, the nights that I don't have to edit a video, I'll, uh, I'll watch a bit of YouTube. And uh, last night I was watching Farmer Phil. He was away down to the Lama Shore with his father and I was watching it. And the, there was a lad on there on, on, on his video called, hang on, I've forgotten, just a sec. Tom Lamb, his name is. And I wanted to make sure I got it right, because anyway, he was on Farmer Phil's video, and once I watched Farmer Phil's video, I thought I'll have a see what Tom Lamb is, because he was kind of uh, talking about his YouTube channel through Farmer Phil's video. And uh, so yeah, I went and had a look through, and I, I clicked on his channel, and then I had a flick through some of the videos, and one of the thumbnails was, um, uh, he sort of left a review on uh, DX55, uh, or a DX50 sorry it was, he hired a DX50 and uh, I thought he had some very fair comments on there about uh, serviceability and access and you know controllability and things like that, I thought it was a good review and there was a couple of bits that he pointed out which I would not noticed but if I do come to PDI one of those machines I'll take note of how the pipes come out of the um, king post and up onto the boom and we can just shove those pipes back into the body of the machine a bit. So um, yeah, I thought it was a fair review. And uh, obviously once you finish watching this and uh, you know, you've got no else to do, look him up, Tom Lamb, give him a like and a subscribe because uh, that's the only video that I watched, but I'm gonna try and catch up on some of his other videos because uh, they look quite interesting. But yeah, go and get a look at that. Right, I'm gonna leave it at that for today. So thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video and uh, yeah, for more bits and pieces throughout the week, check out TikTok and Instagram, Ali's Digger Diary. Yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good weekend. See you on Monday. I'm doing a job for another dealer on Monday, so keep an eye out on that. Ta-da!